This is going to be a study on Leviathan. An entire chapter is given to this character in the book of Job, chapter 41. And if you read the Bible and study the Bible, and you've probably come along some commentaries and some study Bibles, and many of these claim that Leviathan is a crocodile or some kind of dinosaur. However, when reading Job 41, to make it a crocodile, you would have to ignore the entire chapter. So before we go to Job 41, if you would look at Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So notice how it gives you several names of the devil in verse 2. It calls him the dragon, and it calls him that old serpent. Now turn back to the Old Testament to Isaiah chapter 27 and verse 1. And if you're honest and sincere, you will be able to see who Leviathan is just by turning to this verse here in Isaiah. In Isaiah 27 1, it says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So it calls Leviathan a serpent and a dragon, just like it calls the devil in Revelation chapter 20, a serpent and a dragon. And if you're still not sure who this character is, let's turn to a couple more verses before we go to Job 41. Psalm 74, 14 says, Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. So something interesting about Leviathan here is the, that he has more than one head. It says, heads. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces. Crocodiles and other animals like that don't have multiple heads, unless it's something you're seeing on Ripley's Believe It or Not or something. But Revelation 13, 1 through 3 says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So here we have the beast, the Antichrist, Satan incarnate. And he's described here in Revelation 13, having more than one head. So by comparing scriptures with scriptures, it seems Leviathan is the devil. And if you're still not convinced... Let's go through Job 41 and look at more descriptions of Leviathan. It seems that in this chapter, the Lord is showing us that Leviathan is too powerful for any man to handle on their own. And by doing this, he is showing us that if we can't even handle Leviathan, then there is no way that we can handle God Almighty because God himself created the devil. Job 26, 13, by his spirit... He hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. So the Bible says in Job 41, 1, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? If he is just a crocodile or some other kind of aquatic animal, aquatic animal, this is, this is strange because you could draw out Leviathan with a hook. If he's just a crocodile or an animal in the water, you could draw out Leviathan with a hook or with the cord which thou lettest down. But in the book of Job, Job is the bait on the hook. In Job chapter 1, the Lord says to the devil, Hast thou considered my servant Job? The Lord will let a righteous man be thrown to the devil to make him better and to teach him something many times. Job 41.2, Canst thou put an hook into his nose, 
or bore his jaw through with a thorn. If it was a crocodile, you could. If it was a some type of animal, sure you could. Verse 3, will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Now, if this was an animal, then why would this even be a question? Animals don't speak. Uh, the devil isn't going to make supplications to you. And probably the only time he asks God something is when he gets permission to destroy a Christian's life, their flesh. Just like he had to get permission to destroy the flesh of Job, which he didn't destroy it, but he took him through the ringer. And in Job 4, what will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? The devil does make a covenant with Israel. In Isaiah 28, 15, it talks about a covenant with death and hell. And that's what happens in the time of Jacob's trouble. The Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel and then breaks it after three and a half years. And the devil may make a covenant with any person. Maybe give them fame and money in exchange for worship or just as simple of a, as a drug dealer or a, a drug addict. You know, he'll give them drugs if they just give themselves over to him. He'll help them continue to get drugs or whatever your addiction may be. And even the devil says to Jesus in Matthew 4, 9, he says, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The devil wants worship, and he has the power to give something of this world, because he's the God of this world, in exchange for that worship. Job 41, 4, Wilt he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? You can't make him your servant, but the Lord can. He uses the devil like a puppet. The devil can make you his servant. In Joshua twenty four sixteen, it says, And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. You can be a servant to false gods. And by doing this, you serve the devil. Job 41, 5, Wilt thou play with him as with a bird, or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? You can't play around with the devil and not get hurt. There are birds on this earth you can't even play with and not get hurt. So how can you play with Leviathan and not get hurt? But there are eagles that have picked up full-grown people and flew off with them. Can, can you play with him as with a bird? You can't even play with all the birds. Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? The Lord has the power to bind him, not you. Revelation 21 through 3 shows us where Satan is bound for a thousand years. And the Lord gives this angel the, the strength or power to bind the devil for a thousand years. There's no way on this earth that we ever have enough power to do something like that. Job 41, 6, Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? The Lord did or, or will make a banquet of him. Psalm 74, 14, Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. That's an interesting verse, one to think about. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You can't make a banquet of him, but the Lord can. But I tell you one thing, the devil can make a banquet of you. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Job 41, 7, Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? You obviously can't. You can't do either of these things, but God can. God can get under his skin. 
He can fill his skin with barbed irons. The fact that God was God and the devil wasn't God made the devil's skin crawl. In Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also... I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He got under the devil's skin because God is the Most High. And he wants to be the Most High. Verse 7, Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? God not only can get in his head, but he can wound his head not just with fish spears, but even with a stone from a young boy's sling, like in 1 Samuel 7, 15, 50. He can use a woman with a stone to wound his head, like he did in 2 Samuel eleven twenty one. He can wound his head with a tent peg, like he did in Ju Judges four twenty one, and use women to do it, the weaker vessel. He can use a, a woman who's weaker than a man to wound the head. Genesis 3.15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one that bruises the head. And you see that picture all the way through the Bible of the devil or the devil's man getting his head wounded just like the antichrist is going to have a head wound one of his heads will be wounded to death the antichrist in revelation 13 now job 41 8 says lay thine hand upon him remember the battle do no more so remember the battle if you have been in a battle with the devil if you've been burned once then you know you don't want to be burned again remember the battle do no more if you've been through it with the devil, then you know you don't want to do it anymore. Look what he was able to do to Job all throughout this book. Now verse 9, Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? The hope of him is in vain. Satan is the god of this world. Yet just like a lost man, he is without hope and without God in the world. If you're lost then that is what it says about you in Ephesians 2.12. And that's what you were before you were saved if you're a Christian. You were without hope. And Satan, the father of all unsaved people, is without hope. He can't change his mind and be reconciled to God. He's as good as in hell, and he's trying to take as many people with him as he can. So Job 41.9, Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Should not one be cast down even at the sight of him? So the devil was the anointed cherub. In Ezekiel twenty-eight fourteen, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou wast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. So he was able to stand next to the throne of God, and now he is no longer a cherub. He is a dragon, and if you saw him, you would faint shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him. You know, you see in the Bible where if a man sees an angel, he, you know, he falls down in fear. That's the same thing that would happen if you saw Leviathan. He was a cherub. He wasn't a fallen angel. He was a cherub. And now he, in his natural state, is a dragon. Now, Job 41.10, None is so fierce that dare steer him up. Who then is able to stand before me? So none is so fierce that can dare steer him up because he is so fierce. In Daniel 8.23, it calls the Antichrist a king of fierce countenance. In Matthew 8.28, the two devil-possessed men are exceeding fierce, vehement, violent, furious, absolutely no mercy whatsoever. So, the devil would love abortions. He loves murder rapes. He loves hate and sin. He loves 
The Ellen Show. You know, he loves everything wicked. He has no mercy on man. Job 41.10, None is so fierce that dare steer him up. Who then is able to stand before me? If Adano the Esnite, one of David's mighty men, who killed 800 men at one time, stood before the devil, he would lose. If the mighty men of the Bible couldn't stand before the devil, then you can't stand before the devil. Samson couldn't. Shamgar couldn't. The Lord makes the point that if no man can stir the devil up, then who is able to stand before God? Because God made the devil. So who can stand before God? Nobody. Job 41, 11 through 12. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportions. So Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. Why does God allow all the wicked stuff on TV and the internet, the radio, and the smartphones? Because he won't conceal the devil's power. He works in the air. He's the prince of the power of the air. He can work through the air waves. Uh, he works through putting, he can put thoughts in your mind. And Hebrews 2.14 tells us, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. So the devil had the power of death, and the Lord won't conceal his power. He has the power of death, or he had the power of death, now he he has the power if you know a Christian gets out of line that Christian can be turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh but this is only with God's permission and the Lord leaves Satan around so there is a choice a choice of death or life Job 41:12 says I will not conceal his parts nor his power nor his comely proportion he won't conceal his comely proportion. He tells you what the devil looks like. 2 Corinthians 11.14 says, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. As we said, he used to be a beautiful cherub. Ezekiel 28.13, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. That was Satan as the anointed cherub. Now Satan in his natural state looks like a seven-headed dragon. Job 41, 13. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with his double bridle? If it's a crocodile, then a crocodile hunter could come to him. But he's not a crocodile. Job 41, 14. Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. If this is a crocodile, then you see all these crazy guys clamping down on the mouths of crocodiles or alligators, whatever they are. But you can't do that to a leviathan. His teeth are terrible round about. Those creatures that come out of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9 have the teeth of lions. And the devil is a roaring lion who walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now verse 15, his scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a closed seal. So as you already knew, Satan has a pride problem. In Ezekiel twenty-eight seventeen, it says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. He has a pride problem. Job 41, 16 through 17. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. Notice that word sundered. They can't be sundered by you, but by the word of God. Hebrews 4, 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so you can't 
go to the devil and cut him unless you got the King James Bible. And even then, you don't want to approach him unless he just approaches you. Job 41.18 says, By his kneesings a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. His kneesings, like sneezing, when he sneezes, he lights up like a giant dragon jack-o'-lantern. He transforms himself into an angel of light. So he's associated with some counterfeit light. His eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Or like the drunken man in Proverbs. Job 41, 19, Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. So this is a literal fire-breathing dragon. There is nothing new under the sun. No one has an original thought. The prince slaying the dragon and saving the woman is straight from the Bible. The guy going after the monster and then saving the girl and getting the girl is just a plot stolen from the Bible. Because as you know through the Bible, God has Israel in the Old Testament, which is his bride. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ has the church, which is his bride. And they get the girl at the end. Job 41.20, Out of his nostrils goeth smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. So, you see people who smoke weed or vape. That's probably similar. You see these people doing vape vaping tricks and see the smoke come out of their nose and their mouth and ears and eyes, wherever it comes out of. Job 41, 21 through 22, His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth, and his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. So sorrow is turned into joy. Like how a sad teenager can get joy and excitement from a heavy metal concert. Pleasures from the devil bring temporary joy. And then he just leaves you and it, you don't feel good about it anymore. After you've already committed this sinful act, you no longer feel good about what you just did because the devil leaves you, that adrenaline rush leaves, the excitement leaves. Job twenty or Job forty one twenty three. The flakes of his flesh are joined together; they are firm in themselves; they cannot be moved. But God can move him. Psalms ten six talks about the a wicked man who says he'll never be in adversity, and it says I shall not be moved. That's what the wicked man says, and that's what the devil says. But God can move him. Job forty one twenty four. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. So like the Grinch, it is his heart is so many sizes too small. Job forty one twenty five when he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings they purify themselves. So he's all about raising up himself. Isaiah 2.17 says, And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. The devil wants to raise up himself. He wants to be exalted. But one day the only one being exalted will be the Lord Jesus Christ. But verse 25, When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. Just like the bell worshippers in First Kings eighteen twenty eight, you know Elijah was going up against all these bell worshippers, and it says, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out upon them. Just like many depressed and sorrowful people today have a problem with cutting themselves, it's a sad problem for many people. I'm not making light of it, but the devil likes the shed blood. He takes it as a sacrifice for himself because it's not to God. God doesn't want you to self-harm. So if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection to be your payment for sin, then you can be saved and have eternal life. You'll finally have peace. And Jesus Christ shed his blood for you. He doesn't require a blood sacrifice for you 
from you personally because he is the ultimate sacrifice. His blood was enough to pay for your sins, but the devil wants you to sacrifice for him. He loves suicide. He loves self-harming. He loves he loved those uh, prophets of Baal cutting themselves. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. They were trying to purify themselves so they could call up on their false god. Job 41.26 The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the habergeon. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are counted with him into stubble. Our sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. So you can't approach him with weapons. And if all the armies of the world ganged up on Leviathan, they couldn't take him out. He's much more ferocious than Godzilla, than King Kong, than T-Rex, than Jaws, or any other sci-fi character. All those things just picture Leviathan. You have to have spiritual weapons. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 4, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So our weapons are spiritual, not carnal. Your best weapons are a King James Bible, prayer, fellowship with God, not physical weapons. Job 41, 30, Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire, so sharp stones are under him. Yet obviously they don't hurt him. Maybe they fell off of him. A few verses back we read how his heart is as hard as a stone. So maybe other parts of his body is as well. Job forty one thirty one, he maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He made it maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. So obviously extreme heat doesn't bother the devil. But it will in hell. Right now he just makes the sea to boil like a pot. And he isn't in the oceans on this earth. He is in the waters above the heavens. Psalms 148.4 Praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. So somewhere out there beyond the stars you have a body of water. And that's where Leviathan dwells. Job 41.32 He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. So when he is swimming through that water, he leaves a glowing trail behind him. And that's pictures the broad way to hell. It looks good. Many people go down the broad way to hell. Job forty one thirty three upon earth there is not as like who is made without fear. What animal do you know that is fearless? Not a crocodile. They're not fearless. Get some guns and shoot at him and he'll run. Not a lion. They run from other animals. Samson basically ripped a lion's face off. But men themselves aren't fearless. Even the ones who aren't afraid of anything, they still fear other men. So to call Leviathan anything but the devil is ignoring the chapter. And Genesis 9, 2 says, The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. So if the fear of man is on all the animals, then how could this be a crocodile when it says in Job 41, 33, Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. And then verse 34, he beholdeth all high things. He is king over all the children of pride. So he beholdeth all high things. And Ephesians six twelve says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He beholdeth all high things. The devil wants to be like the Most High. Throughout the Old Testament, you see where men worship false gods in the high places. Now, Job 41, 34. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. So how is a crocodile or a dinosaur a king over all the children of pride? The devil has a pride problem. He is king over 
over every person who is proud. And the Bible talks about children of disobedience, children of hell, children of the devil. Not everyone is a child of God. And if you're not saved, then the character we've talked about in this study is your father. And if you want God to be your father, then you need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for your sins, shed his blood, was buried and resurrected, and put your trust on him and what he did for you on the cross to be your payment for sin. The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you want a different father, come to Jesus Christ, and you can be saved and have eternal life.